Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'd like to talk about Fedora 28 and KDE. So, I'm using Fedora 28 and the official KDE spin because I like Fedora and I like KDE a lot. Actually, my favorite um, desktop environment is the mo my most favorite one is KDE. Then comes uh, Cinnamon, then let's say XFCE, and GNOME is not really mine. I mean, I get why people like it. I like certain aspects of it, but I don't like it as uh, I don't want to use it as my main as my daily driver. So <clears throat> I'd like to explain why I use Fedora, because Fedora has got a beautiful package manager, a fantastic, very nice package manager, DNF. All I have to do to update the system is type sudo dnf update. I don't have to type sudo apt get update then sudo apt get dist upgrade or whatever just one command and i am done the other thing is let's see dnf help look at this dnf does i think it does really everything for you for example if you want to roll back uh, on a piece of software or driver you want to install a previous version instead of the current version you can do it with DNF for example with Arch you have to install a separate uh, command line tool to do that and in DNF it's included so that's why I like DNF it's a great tool you can do everything with one single tool and I like it I don't have I don't like to have many things uh, I like to have one tool which does as much as possible. Alrighty, let's roll on. Uh, the next thing I like about Fedora is that it works well with my hardware. Uh, it works well with my multifunctional printer. I've got a Samsung printer which uh, also has got a scanner. And the very, very nice thing about Fedora is that all I have to do is... Da -da 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 -da. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I have to install this universal or unified Linux driver, the official driver for from Samsung. And all I have to do in the command line, I have to install, I think, install.sh or... Or, 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 yeah, that's it. I have to run, the, run this command, and you know, it installs the printer and the scanner, and everything works immediately after installation. And I like it a lot, because uh, I also used Arch for earlier, for a few months, or maybe half of a year, I don't know. I really like Arch. I Actually, I used uh, Antergos. But my problem with it was that, uh, first of all, by in, if I installed this official driver, the scanner didn't work. So I installed uh, the driver from the AUR and of course all its uh, dependencies, but, and the scanner worked, but after some time it stopped working and I couldn't repair it. It just stopped working, so I had to ditch uh, uh, Antergos because I need to use my scanner, not just my printer. I need to use my scanner too. And that's what I like. You just install it and it works. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to mess around with configuration files or whatever. Uh, the other thing about Fedora is that uh, you, you always get the latest kernel I have to be honest, I don't need the latest kernel, but I'm just like that. I like to have the most current uh, software possible. I don't always need it, but I want to have it. That's me. Everybody's different. There are a lot of people who, who are satisfied with 
<coughs> for example, with, with the uh, package versions that uh, Debian is um, that Debian comes with. I'm just not like that. Uh, so, also the packages are, I think, mostly very much up to date in Fedora. Uh, also, if you, for example, if you have got Fedora 27 and you want to upgrade to Fedora 28, you don't have to reinstall the system, although this is what I always do. I always do a clean install because I just do not store anything important on the local hard drive. I store everything uh, that I really need on my uh, NAS or in the cloud, but rather on my NAS. So for me, it's very easy to reinstall the system. Okay, what else? Yeah, Fedora is of course not perfect. There is no perfect operating system. There is no perfect distribution. One of the problem with uh, problems with Fedora is that actually in Fedora 20, 27 worked perfectly with my hardware, but uh, I don't know why, but in Fedora 28, many times when I log into the desktop, one of my monitors just becomes blank. Uh, it, just, it just won't show anything and I have to log out sometimes it freezes the system, so sometimes I have to restart the whole system and then my second monitor will work. Uh, that's one problem that I have with Fedora, but I only have it uh, in version 28. I don't know why, but it is really annoying because, you know, if I turn on my uh, computer, I expect both of my screens to work because I use both of them. So if if it keeps to be a problem if it keeps being a problem i i think i will have to switch to kubuntu you see i'm not a fanboy of any distribution i use what works for me and possibly what what is also not, uh, i mean what i really like and works for me uh, okay let's talk about kde why I like KDE? Because just look, have a look at this. It looks gorgeous. It's beautiful. I am using the, let's see, the uh, mm -hmm, Breeze Dark Theme, because I just like dark themes. And the desktop theme is the Breath Aurora. Actually, I think the most beautiful implementation of KDE by default is uh, Manjaro KDE. But if I uh, used um, an Arch-based Arch distribution, I would go for Antarvos again. Because you know Manjaro has got its own repositories uh, and there, there are some special stuff about it. I just like Arch as it is, but I don't like the installation process of Arch. That's why I use, or I have used Antergos. Okay, that's enough about this. Um, the one of uh, a very nice thing about the uh, dark themes in KDE is that, for example, in Firefox or Waterfox. If you want to search for something, let's see. So, if you are in Linux Mint or I guess Ubuntu, or actually, if you are in a GNOME desktop environment, this text input field here is going to have a dark background and dark text if you have a dark theme. And of course, you cannot really see what you have typed in or what you are typing into this text field and this is pretty bad it doesn't happen with chromium so chromium does does something better than uh, firefox as far as uh, compatibility with dark themes go in gnome 
So that's why I like that's what I like about KDE that uh, if you have if you are using a Dart theme, you know everything looks nice, beautiful, and there is no such stupid problems like having dark uh, text fields with dark text. You know it it makes the whole thing useless. Uh, all right. What else do I like about KDE? KDE Connect. Just have a look at it. Actually, I think I have just discovered a bug because if, if you cl uh, click on the notification um, drawer or how you should call it, I don't know, some widget or what, and if you do a window swapping, I mean window tiling, look at this. Wait a minute. Yeah, then you can actually tile the this notification window as well. So that's a bug. But probably I just have to log out and log back in again to fix it or restart the system. I don't know. Whatever, it doesn't disturb me right now. Okay. What I like about Fedora, yeah, I wanted to talk about KDE Connect. You know, I'm an Android user, and sometimes I need to copy files to my Android uh, phone, or I need to copy files from my Android phone. And it's so nice that I don't have to plug in a cable, I, I don't have to use any cables, because KDE Connect has me covered. Come on. No pair devices available. Why? Why, why, why? Of course it doesn't work when I'm doing the video. Just before the video, it has worked. So, let's see. Under system settings. Hmm, <laughs> where are you, KD Connect? KDE Connect. It has sent a ping. What is the problem? Okay, it's connected now. So, I get to see the notifications. Uh, I can read emails or SMS messages that I get here. I can also, and this is the best feature of it, I can just get into the, the file system of my phone and I can copy and paste whatever I like. You know, that's a huge, that's great, you know, see, I have my phone here, no cables, it's a OnePlus 6, by the way, that's just so great, and I also can access my photos, I don't need iTunes like with iPhone and iPad. You know, it's so ridiculous. That's just so beautiful. Okay, what else? Huh, that works properly. Yeah, cool. Okay. I have talked about the theming. Uh, yeah, KDE is very, very flexible. There, there's a ton of settings, and uh, some people say that it's a drawback because uh, new users can get confused, and I don't agree. Because if you're a new user and you install KDE, or someone installs it for you and you just log in, by default, KDE looks like Windows. You can use it right away. You don't have to install extensions, tweak tools to make it usable, to make it familiar, to make it com comfortable for you. It is by default a very, very usable and comfortable system. And if you have to tweak it, you can tweak it a lot in the settings, but you don't have to. So. This is a BS that people get confused in KDE because of the settings. No, if you don't want to mess around, 
don't mess around. So you 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 know, you have your choice. You have your freedom to mess around or don't mess around. And that's what I love about KDE, that it doesn't take away your freedom. It doesn't take away choices. It gives a ton of choices, and it's up to you if you if you make use of these all all of these uh, configurations settings or not. That's great. Not like GNOME, that either you cannot do something even if you want to, or if you want to do something that is not there by default, you have to install extensions, tweak tools, and so on. That's my main problem with GNOME, and that's what I really love about KDE. Of course, KDE is not perfect. Just as you see, there are bugs. There are bugs in every piece of software, so there's nothing to worry about about it. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if if I want to talk about anything else. Uh, I like the widgets, for example, this uh, folder or widget or how how it's called. I don't know. You know, it's cool. I, ju I, I can access any folder I want uh, right on my desktop. And it looks really nice. It, it's beautiful. What, what can I show you? Yeah, it is just great. I'm pretty sure I wanted to say something else about KDE. Okay, let's rant a little bit about GNOME. I used the Fedora workstation with the GNOME desktop on my laptop. Right now I use uh, I have um, Linux Mint Cinnamon on my laptop, but uh, but the reason is because Fedora stopped working well with my touch uh, touchpad. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny story. I'm gonna uh, make a separate video about it. Uh, so I get why people like GNOME, and I really do think that people coming from a Mac may like GNOME better. But I find it really a step back that GNOME takes away a lot of choice and freedom, a lot of settings, a lot of configurations. So if you have a vanilla GNOME installation, you cannot do much. You have to, first of all, you have to install the GNOME Tweak tool if you want to be able to configure basic settings. If you want to do even more tweaks, you have to inst install extensions. For that, you have to install a some kind of extension in uh, Firefox or Chrome or whatever you use, and then you can install GNOME extensions. You know, it's like it is deliberately made difficult to configure it, and it's a major step back. Why? Why would anybody want uh, to limit you to do basic and useful stuff with your desktop environment? You know that I think it is not the spirit of Linux. The spirit of Linux is really about freedom, about choice. <sighs> yeah, but especially on a laptop, GNOME looks beautiful and also the um, you know I can understand the workflow and on a laptop I think the workflow is much more usable than on a desktop PC especially with uh, with a multi-monitor setup uh, yeah so as I said KD is great it's beautiful of course it's, it's not perfect for example, sometimes 
you know in the settings you can set you can choose which monitor is your default monitor and for some reason KDE sometimes it just keeps opening apps on the other monitor that is not the default monitor uh, yeah and there are things like this uh, what I'm really missing with KDE and uh, uh, actually with any desktop environment other than Cinnamon is the uh, window tiling feature. You know you can configure uh, KDE, the window manager to do stuff like this but what I like about Cinnamon that the window manager in Cinnamon really works, works like the window manager in, in uh, Windows as far as um, window tiling goes uh, because only with the uh, Windows key and the arrow keys you can tile the window you know to the sides up and down and also into the corners the four corners here you cannot do that you can tile it only to the sides and up and down no corners okay I think that's it I think the main advantage at least for me uh, is the um, flexibility of KDE and KDE connect it is just such a great feature I can access the file system on my phone so easily I can copy and paste files, I can copy and paste pictures, photos, that's just so wonderful. Uh, actually KDE Connect uh, works just like this in uh, Cinnamon, because I have tried it, but it doesn't look that pretty. And I just love how a uh, breeze dark theme looks. This dark color, these, these uh, color accents, I just like it. I love it. I love it. This is so beautiful. This is fantastic. Okay, I think that's it for today. Yeah, see you next time. Goodbye.